Hi there and welcome to this video. This is the second in a series on time lapses and in this one we're going to focus on creating time lapse videos from a series of still images captured with your DSLR or mirrorless camera. If you're enjoying the series hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. It'd be great to keep you along for the journey. So let's get into the creation of time lapse videos. Hi there, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is part of a series of videos on time lapses. In the first video, we looked at how we can capture in camera a time lapse video and also how we can capture a series of still images to then create a time lapse video in post production. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. If you didn't see the first video, make sure you go back and look at it. I'll put a card above. But let's get stuck into the production of time-lapse videos from still images. In the first video, I showed you how you can use interval timer shooting to capture a series of images over time. We captured 300 images, each taken three seconds apart. And the camera stored those as raw files on the memory card. So let's have a look at how we can use that sequence of 300 images. I'm going to show you how you can create time-lapse videos using two distinct packages. But the first step is common between them. We're going to use Lightroom for that and we're going to import all 300 images into Lightroom. We're going to make some tweaks to it, perhaps change the crop, a few of the basic levels. And we're going to synchronize that across all 300 images. We'll then export the images as JPEGs. And at this point, you can either use a specialized time-lapse package called LR Time-lapse or you can use Premiere Pro. We'll then look at the advantages and disadvantages of each of those, along with the approaches we used in the first video. So let's get stuck in and import our files into Lightroom. So I'm now in Lightroom and I've imported my 300 images. I've renamed them so they're sequential. Each of the images is three seconds apart. Um, I've got all 300 here, so a quick check through shows that the lighting was pretty consistent all the way through. There was perhaps a little bit of cloud came over in the last few images, but they all look reasonably consistent. So what we're going to do is just make some minor tweaks to this first image to start with. So if we go into develop, um, as you can see, it's come out quite nice. Um, we can perhaps just check the levels, use auto to, as a starting point, as I've showed in um, some of my other videos. I'm not going to make massive changes here. Um, it looks reasonably good, so I'll perhaps just check the horizon, just straighten up the horizon very slightly. I'm also going to change the aspect ratio to make it compatible with 4K. So I know that 3840 pixels by 2160, which is the 4K format I'm using, is a 16 by 9, um, and that's looking quite good. I'm going to just put a little bit of a um, an effect on the sky, it's the contrast, so the clouds just stand out a little bit more. So there we have it, that's not a bad image, I'm not going to do too much more to it. So back in the library module, you can see my first image is the one I've edited, it's very slightly different to all the others, so what we want to do is sync those settings across all of the other 299 images. So if we come to the right hand panel, and down the bottom here we've got two sync settings. So we can sync the metadata or we can sync the settings. So if we select all of our images, I use control A there, and we hit sync settings, we can choose what settings it will copy from that first image across all of the other 299 images to synchronize them. Now I've got everything checked here and if I press synchronize it will now move and transfer or synchronize all of those settings across all 300 images. So at this point you can go off for a cup of tea because it does take a little bit of time depending on your um, the power of your computer. So we've got our 300 images here in um, Lightroom and for us to create a time lapse we have to export them into um, a JPEG format so that either Premiere Pro or LR Timelapse can then create the um, time-lapse movie from them. I'm going to export them using the LR Timelapse export um, settings. So if we go into 
um, file export in Lightroom and you'll see here there is an LR time-lapse option in the preset. I can look at how I export them. I know I've only got the um, trial version, the free version of LR time-lapse so I can only export um, a maximum of 300 images and with certain settings but within here you can set the destination for your exported files, you can set the um, name of the sequence and you can make various other adjustments. I'm going to keep it fairly simple and then you click export and again you'll see Lightroom starting to export and obviously depending on the power of your computer it can take quite a long time to export 300 photos. So my exporting has now completed and because I use the LR time-lapse export preset actually at the end of the export process it automatically opens LR time-lapse and opens the render video window. Now I have the free evaluation um, version of the software here and therefore it's limited to I think said 300 shots earlier it's actually 400 now and you're limited to 1080p output and a lot of the functionality is greyed out but it gives you a really good insight into the capabilities of this software. If you want to unlock greater functionality up to 4k for example there is a private license that's about 120 euros. If you want full functionality including generating up to 8k time lapses then there's a pro license which is just under 300 euros so not massive amounts in the context of software today and certainly at the 120 euros is quite an affordable piece of software to use for time lapse if you really get into it. I'm just going to use the free version today just to give you an insight into the capabilities. So here you can make various adjustments. I've got it set as I say at 1080p, color sampling at 420 because that's what it limits it to. And really I'm not going to use a lot of the functionality in here. It's a really powerful tool, particularly when you're doing sunsets, sunrises, where you might want to make minor adjustments to individual groups of frames. This is a fairly simple, basic time lapse, so I'm just going to hit render video, and what we'll see is the LR time lapse then creates that time lapse video. It's really that simple for a basic time lapse video. And at the end of the rendering process, which took about three minutes on um, my machine, the file opens in uh, Windows Explorer. It's about a 29 megabyte file. And as you can see, here it is playing. So if we want to use Premiere Pro instead of LR time lapse, what we can do is in Lightroom, again we would have to export the files, so we select all the files, we can go into export and choose our export settings as we, as we want to and export them. Now if you want to use the full power of Premiere Pro make sure that you export your files with names that end in a number i.e. start at 1 and go sequentially through to 300 because that really will help you when it comes to unlocking the simplest way in Premiere Pro of creating a time-lapse movie. Now I've already exported these files to use in LR time-lapse and I use the LR time-lapse Preset. So I'm just going to use those files again. They are in a folder here that LR Time Lapse created and it's sequentially numbered them from 1 through to 300. So that's a good starting point for me in Premiere Pro. So let's take a look at creating a time lapse in Premiere Pro. Now I've already gone into Premiere Pro, I've created a new project and I've named my sequence um, the Mount Time Lapse Prem Pro so I know which version the time lapse is. I'm in the assembly layout of the desktop and if we go over to the left hand side and we right mouse click on the desktop we get a bunch of options including import. So if we go into there and I'm in my the um, folder in my Windows Explorer where LR time lapse saved the numerically numbered sequence. So this is where the benefits of sequentially numbering the, the files comes into its own in Premiere Pro because if you click on number one and you have image sequence checked. When you press open, Premiere Pro will import all 300 images into a clip. So if we 
drag that clip down onto the timeline. We'll keep the existing settings. Now this may take a little bit of time to render in real time. You may not see it actually moving. It might be quite jerky because I'm obviously it's rendering um, 300 4K files. It's also recording the desktop while I'm talking to you. So um, it's really challenging my PC quite a lot here. But what you'll see is when we render it out, it actually comes out as a, um, a normal time lapse. Now, one of the advantages of doing this in Premiere Pro is you have a bit more control over the time lapse. So, for example, we can left click on the, the clip and we can change the speed. We can make it twice as fast. We can make it half the speed. So we have more functionality or now it may be what we want to do. We have, you know, by doing this in Premiere Pro, it gives us a bit more um, ability to use those 4K time-lapse images. So actually what we can do if we go into editing and we select the clip, it may be that actually we want to um, start with the cathedral zoomed in in the center of the of the frame. So we start by creating some keystones there and then by the end of the clip we want it to be we want it to be back out at full frame. So now when we watch you'll see that once it's rendered it'll be much smoother than this but you can actually control how your camera flows. Hopefully over the two videos we've given you a bit of an insight into how to firstly capture for time lapse and then secondly how to create time lapses. We looked at four different methods, two in camera and two which require post processing. If we look at the two in camera versions, one with your smartphone, really simple, very quick, most of us have that capability and we can just pull out our smartphones and capture basic time lapses and even quite complex time lapses very simply. We also looked at using your DSLR or mirrorless camera to create in-camera time lapses. With this you get slightly better quality, you have a bit more control over um, the process. However, you probably do need a tripod or at least somewhere stable to sit your camera for a prolonged period of time. If you then go to the, the methods that we've looked at that require post-processing, we looked at LR time lapse, a specific package for um, creating time lapses from still images, and we looked at using Premiere Pro as a method for creating the time lapse. So when would you use the different versions? I use a mixture of all of them, and I have used all of them in my past. I use my smartphone when I just see something I want to capture very quickly, very simply. I use the in-camera capabilities of my Z series cameras for time lapses when I want something that's perhaps a little better quality but I just want a quick piece of footage for social media perhaps where the audience is going to view it on a smartphone or a tablet and where perhaps full 4K is not necessarily required. When it comes to the more complex approach of creating still images and then compiling them into a time lapse obviously I use Lightroom um, and that or an equivalent is really useful for just getting the images, giving them a little bit of edge in post-processing as still images. Um, if you've got Premiere Pro, I would use Premiere Pro to um, import those still images and create your timeline. There's more capability there. You can zoom in, you can create a more dynamic flow with the clip. Um, so there are advantages there. And of course you can create up to 4K, 8K footage if you want. If you haven't got Premiere Pro then LR Time Lapse is a great piece of software. It's a great package. Um, I've used it in the free version 
um, where you are constrained because you can only output at up to 1080p and you can only use up to 400 images but for 120 euros you can unlock a lot more functionality with that and if you haven't got Premiere Pro it's probably cheaper than investing in a subscription that gives you Premiere Pro. So you've got four different methods there for creating time-lapse. How do you choose which one to use? Well as I suggested it comes down to a number of things. Firstly how much control do you want over the output. How complex is the time lapse you're creating? We've, we've been looking at basic simple time lapses. If you really want to get into sunsets and sunrises maybe you've got to move towards the more complex end. Although the in-camera capabilities of, thing, of cameras like the Z series are getting really good in that space. Secondly there's a trade-off between the quality and the time you're willing to invest. The approaches we looked at that use post-processing undoubtedly take more time. Exporting 300 JPEGs and then rendering them takes time. Finally, it's important to think about your audience. What are you actually going to use the time-lapse for? If it's going to be um, used primarily on smartphones and tablets and it's going to be compressed significantly, then you perhaps don't need a 4K or an 8K time-lapse. Whereas perhaps if you're going to be putting it on YouTube as part of a 4K video, you really do want that 4K capability and therefore investing the time is probably a good investment. So hopefully we've given you some inspiration with summer coming up, but it'd be worth getting out there. Just try and unlock some of the capabilities that are built into the devices we carry these days that but we perhaps forget about. You know, time lapses are fun. They do create a much richer piece of content that is quite useful at times. So throw down the gauntlet, get out there, have some fun with your cameras, see what time lapses you can create. Let me know how you get on with your time lapses in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. And I hope you have some great fun creating some great time lapses.